Hi everyone, thanks for joining me on Sparkling in a Coop again. So, I thought the first one I would start out by doing a sparkling wine that I really enjoy, one that's under $20 generally, that's Australian dollars, is Dutz. This one here. Um, and that's actually the one that I used to open um, in that how to open sparkling wine, which I'm sure probably sent some professionals out there reeling, oh, what are you doing? But that's just how I open it. It's just the easy way for the everyday person, I thought. And even Dutz, I really love it. I mean, a lot of people say Dutz, whatever. <laughs> I'm not French. Um, but I believe it's pronounced Dutz. I'm probably completely wrong and I'm going to get spammed down below. But I really do love this wine. It's actually from New Zealand. I'm, I'm from New Zealand as well. It's made, We're both made in New Zealand. A lot of people do actually call it a champagne. They think, oh, this is a great champagne for, you know, under $20. It isn't an actual champagne. But, I mean, I do understand the confusion. And I'm sure some people are going, why have you got that on there? You should have drunk it straight away. Anyway. But, and I'm shaking the bottle around. It's actually made in Marlborough. It's a, I'll read it straight off there, uh, Marlborough Cuvée Brut. So it is, that pretty much means it's a blended wine, a dry wine, very dry blended wine. So it's a blend of Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Uh, yes. And it's beautiful. It's beyond balanced. It's just a gorgeous wine. I think because it's just a light, crisp, fresh wine. Uh, I mean, they go on about it. it's got, you know, toasty notes and, and the yeast the flavors. Look, I'm still learning all that stuff. For me, and for I think for the most everyday person that has found this uh, wine, it's a beautiful white sparkling wine to have with pretty much at, um, you know, wine breakfasts. I've had it at celebrations. I've had it with dinner, whether it be poultry, fish, red meat, pork. It doesn't matter. It goes with anything because it's not overpowering. I know a lot of people probably have tried uh, maybe wines around that price point, and there's some out there that are just horrendous uh, that... The best way I can describe them for the everyday person that's not in all the lingo of wines is very gasoline, that very sharp stuff, taste that you would put in a car to run the car, that really sharp gasoline taste. This is a very fresh, fruity, dry, beautiful taste, and it goes really and complements any sort of meal really well. And we're even talking like you know, pizza or something that would make wine people roll around, but it just, it goes really well, like it's not going to overpower something like rich cheeses, it's not going to get lost when you have something really sweet as well, because it, it's got a beautiful uh, fruitiness to it as well, that I think goes gorgeously with a lot of things. Now they say it's got a very fine energetic mousse, what they mean is that sort of bubble, when you pour it into a glass, I'm going to do it now, and I'll sure I'm going to make people roll around. You don't pour it like that. I pour it like I'm going to drink it, not going to, you know, get intimate with it. And I'm using a coupe. Yes, I know. I should be using a flute with the rounded edge. Uh, but I'm not going to be sitting here enjoying the um, ambience of it. I'm going to drink it. But you can look at that. Look at that beautiful, beautiful color. It's a pale yellow. It's a beautiful golden color. I know sometimes you have um, white wines out there that are like a really dark uh, sort of color and they're not necessarily off sometimes it can mean that they're they're gone off But it also can mean that they're just that really really rich I find that's really with the really sweet ones too. They're that sort of powerful sort of color as well again You can go in the different types um, of uh, sparkling wines. There's Pinot Noir, Pinot Gris There's the blends um, There's Chardonnay a very you know popular Fruity one and just depending where you're you know, it's in warmer or cooler climates that they they do the grapes so It just sort of depends on the what kind of notes or what kind of fruity flavors that you're going to get from it um, But this is just beautiful. You can see a beautiful fine bead fine bubbles. It's easy to see I must admit in a flute But I just wanted you to see the beautiful color in it Obviously if I just opened it you would have got a beautiful display of mousse um, on the top, but it does have a fine Fine bead it does disperse a lot quicker in um, that large surface area. Best coops to get are the ones like that. Again, a lot of people, uh, sparkling lovers out there, might reel in 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 horror of how I'm pouring it. You generally tend to tip. How I how I how I like to do is I generally tend to tip the glass and sort of pour, so I'm not losing a lot of that sort of display the problem is with that uh, it's it's hard to do it while I'm trying to film it so that's the only reason but you can see look at that look at that fine display 
Look at that. That beautiful, steady effervescence. <laughs> It's just gorgeous. But um, yeah, I just wanted to sort of just tell you a little bit about it. So it isn't a champagne. A lot of people say it is a champagne. Uh, they're confused, but like I said, it's it's easy to um, understand that because it's actually from Marlborough. They're, where they are is in Marlborough in New Zealand. But uh, it's pretty much a partnership between uh, Dutes in uh, France and Champagne. So the vines and grapes and all that are in New Zealand but they're using traditional champagne methods from France. So uh, it can only really be called a champagne if it was actually made, bottled, etc. in France, in Champagne in France, the region of Champagne, but it's not. So that's the reason why it's not a champagne, but you can understand the confusion around that. But it is, it does have that, because it's using that beautiful, sort of the traditional methods, etc. Um, you know, it is a beautiful wine, I think, it just goes. And the price point, generally, I mean, I get it at Dan Murphy's for about $16, $17. You can get it um, at some of your local bottlers. I've seen it around about the $20 mark. I have seen it even shockingly around $36 mark because they're trying to market it as a champagne, which it's not. Um, mm -mm. <laughs> which is not. Mm. So I look like a, a, an alcoholic. This is, I mean, um, obviously I'm hoping you are over 18 if you're watching this channel, but it's a beautiful, beautiful light wine. I think it's not, it's not gasoline. -y. It's not also, what I would describe, there's some really beautiful, beautiful champagnes out there like Lance and Gold. But Lance and Gold is quite overpowering. It's what I would call very raisiny. When I say, when I say raisiny, I will use a proper terminology later, but for the everyday person, it's that really strong, sweet, knock your socks off kind of flavor. Like it would, it would, it might go well with cheeses and something like that where it's, you're not gonna lose that flavor. But with some other meals, it's just so strong. It's just so strong. Whereas this is gentle. It's gentle fruitiness, gentle sweetness. It does have those light toasty notes as well, but it's just a beautiful blend, really consistent um, as you're drinking it. And they're beautiful, as you can see. Bubbles. Bubbles, bees, the moose. But um, beautiful. And it's a, it's a gorgeous looking bottle. Hello, if you're going to take that to a party, a celebration or something like that, they are going to be oppressed because it does have that look factor. It doesn't look like a cheap bottle of sparkling, but there are still some great ones out there for under under fifteen dollars, under ten dollars that I like as well. Uh, but yeah, it does have that impact. It does look almost like a champagne, just the way that they have it neatly packaged. And as you can understand, that misconception there. But for the dollar value, for a celebratory drink, for a dinner drink, for an everyday drink, it is a gorgeous little drop. And that is a 750ml, I believe. It's a 7.1 standard drinks. I'll put a link down below to the website. Obviously, I am not promoting alcoholism. I just want to make that strong on this, um, on this channel. And it does say this wine may have been f fined the traditional... Way using egg and or milk products and traces may remain if you are uh, have any sort of allergies as well along those lines but guys I hope you enjoyed it I hope you found it sort of useful um, as just far as what I like to sort of drink as well let me know some of your favorite ones down there that are under the $20 mark as well there's some great fine white sparkling wines out there so guys take care